Continuing on with our lessons on valuable information assets, we should try to get a ballpark on what type of information would an enterprise have that they would consider valuable. This list is a pretty good list. We start with intellectual property. These are the trade secrets and the special secret know-how that a company has that their competitors only wish they knew. These are intellectual property or trade secrets that have value. Financial information, bank account numbers, credit card numbers, account numbers, all these types of financial records and information can hold a great deal of value to an enterprise. Their marketing programs and strategies, especially new ones that haven't come out yet, these tend to be very high in value to an organization. If their competitors were able to steal that information, they could beat them to the punch in the marketplace. Research and development programs, the status and direction of those R&D programs. What are we working on? What inventions are we creating? What new product are we about to release? These are the types of secrets that a company will hold valuable as well. Raw material sources, special things that nobody else can figure out. Where do you get them? How do they taste so good? Why do they look so good, etc.? So the vendor list is often a source of high value when it comes to information assets. And the customer list, wouldn't your competitor love to know who you're selling your product to so that they can start to market their product to those same people? Customer lists are often considered to be valuable information assets. And then finally, when we get down to more of an individual level, we look at something called personally identifiable information, or PII. So let's take a more detailed look at what is PII. Personally identifiable information is one of those things that most organizations are required to protect. They have to protect the PII of their employees and of their customers primarily. That says that if a business holds any of this sensitive information about their employees and their customers, they have to protect it at a certain level of care. PII is typically a name, this would be the name of the employer, the name of the customer, plus some other related information. That means the name and a financial account number, like a credit card number or a checking account number, a name and a social security number, a name and a driver's license number, an employee number, or perhaps even a passport number. Now, this would be the bare minimum that we would have to establish what we would call this sensitive information. A person's name alone generally isn't considered PII. A credit card number without the owner's name, once again, still is not generally considered PII. You can't make a purchase without knowing the correct name that goes along with that credit card number. So these two things have to be held together, a name plus one of these things. Now, if I have additional information, not just the name and let's say a bank account number, but I also know that person's address or phone number or birthday, any of these other specifics increases the value of his information and increases the likelihood that he can successfully steal the identity of that individual. 